Welcome back to WGN TV Political Report. Illinois will remain in phase three of its reopening plan for at least another two weeks, but Illinois Republican state senators, they say too many people are now nearing the point of no economic return. In a letter sent to the governor, lawmakers say some business owners are frustrated watching large groups gather to protest the death of George Floyd while their doors remain closed. Metrics show the state is moving in the right direction towards phase four, but health officials want more time to make sure a spike of cases doesn't hit quickly. You might ask, well, gee, can't you speed everything up now that we're doing better? Um, and the fact is that uh, the reason that you have phases is because as you open up industries, and by the way, most of the economy of the state is reopened. The reason that we have phases is because as you reopen and move into a new phase, guess what? You're going to get more cases. That's the, you know, that's the thinking. The group of senators says Illinois' rules are still some of the strictest in the nation. State Senator Jason Berrickman is an assistant Republican leader whose district covers part of central Illinois, including Bloomington. And he joins us this morning via Zoom to talk about this and much more. Looks like you're outside in your backyard. Thanks for your time. Nice. You're, Thanks for having me. We got to get outside. You bet. You bet. Your letter hinted at uh, this problem. Thousands have been gathering in large groups, some with masks, some without them. The incubation period for the novel coronavirus is 14 days. So we may not know, Senator, if there's a spike in cases due to the large rallies and Memorial Day activities. Why not just be careful and wait until we have more information before jumping to the next phase? Well, look, the, the data that's out there right now clearly suggests that the entire state, not just certain regions of it, but the entire state is ready to move to the next phase. That's the data put out by the Pritzker administration. I think that's important to, to look at that and draw the natural conclusions. The other component of this is we've got people all around the state, lots of my constituents, who are claiming that Governor Pritzker is a hypocrite when in fact he's demanding that people, you know, continue to stay in these restrictive orders, some of the most restrictive orders in the entire country, while he's out attending political rallies himself. And so, you know, it, it's time, I think, for the, for the state to begin to reopen. Um, it, you've got the economics of it. You have other concerns. I mean, we've seen increases in domestic violence and substance abuse. Of course, not having children in schools towards the end here was was uh, detrimental to school children. And so it's time for our state to to begin the process of reopening. And we think it's time for the governor to move on this. You know, Senator, the governor says he's following the experts. Uh, it's not his own thoughts. And um, we have over 130,000 cases in the state. It looks like the fight is over a couple of weeks. Isn't it better to be safe than sorry? Well, no, re remember when this all started, the governor very clearly said this was about bending the curve and making sure that our health care systems can withstand, you know, the anticipated crush of people that may come forward with very serious cases of this new novel disease. Well, since that time, uh, we have learned a lot about coronavirus and we've gathered a lot of data. What's very apparent is that our health care systems are, in fact, needing people to come in. They're uh, asking the state for relief because people generally have put off as a result of the governor's orders, some of their more elective surgeries. Uh, the, re the reality again is the curve has been bent or at least the cases never became what people were most concerned about. We should celebrate that and we should recognize that we're policymakers. The governor's a policymaker. It's important to have a team of people around you that includes people that, that bring data and science to the perspective. But at the end of the day, what we need is the governor to be the chief policymaker of the state and to make rational public policy decisions for the people of our state. Right now, the, the people see his decisions. These are unilateral choices he's made. There's been no input from the legislature. They see his choices here, his decisions, as being irrational in light of what we're seeing and you know actually play out in our local communities as we mentioned you represent downstate bloomington which is about 10 percent african-american uh, wondering if you've had any black lives matter protests or are your constituents at all concerned about police reform yes we've had uh protests we've had some unfortunately we've had some looting uh here's here's to me some very positive things have come out of the peaceful demonstrations from some of our uh, community activists from every race. 
Uh, I think in our community, we're engaging in a dialogue among community members and people of law enforcement. Uh, that dialogue is important. It's important for those uh, like myself who are uh, lawmakers to really listen and to understand the perspectives that some of our constituents have in light of this and look for opportunities to reform our system. I, I think uh, what we're seeing in central Illinois, central Illinois by and large is healthy and productive and is a natural outcome of a really terrible set of circumstances uh, that, that came from this man's uh, death by the hands of that police officer. So uh, we're using this as an opportunity to learn, and I think we're going to continue to do that in a very positive and peaceful way. Senator, just a minute left. Um, you said it was sort of a disappointing last session. You don't meet again until November. Are you looking for a special session between now and then to perhaps deal with these or other issues? Well, I think very clearly I've called on the governor very specifically uh, regarding COVID. Uh, the governor shouldn't be acting alone. He's made all of his decisions unilaterally. That's not the way the system works. We have a constitution that says that the legislature is supposed to provide oversight uh, to the governor. We're the uh, branch of the government that is charged with lawmaking. And I think the public would be better served if instead of these emergency orders being put in place by one man, one individual, we would be better served to see the legislature convene, take up the various considerations and concerns and put forward policies through the normal legislative process that are good for the entire state. All right, I, I think it's a better result. All right, we're out of time. Thank you so much for your time, State Senator Jason Barrickman. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your backyard. Thank we'll you. take one more break and then we'll be back inside. Indeed. <laughs>